Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back. It is a beautifully hot day today in Southern California, so I am inside and I'm packing up and cleaning my gear, and I realized that I hadn't done a gear tour, talk about what's in my camera bag, since 2021 um, or when I got my Z6 II. So I figured this would be a really great time to show you guys what I am shooting with in 2024 and what I bring with me in normal Boston fashion. I'm gonna try and make this a quick one. We'll see how long it actually gets, but let's dive into this. I love talking about gear and talking about what I bring with me. Um, it's just so fun, so let's dive right into it. Starting off strong, we're gonna talk about camera bodies, and I have two that are always in my bag, and these are my absolute favorite. I love both of them. I cannot say any bad things about either of these cameras, and that is the D750 and the Z6 II. Now, to talk about the elephant in the room, these are different systems. So this is a Z, this is a mirrorless camera, and this is a DSLR. So this has different lenses than this one. So I have not completely switched over my system. Um, I love the Z uh, cameras and the lenses, but I also love this and I don't wanna give up all of my gear and sell it. It just, I just haven't taken that jump yet. So I am on technically two different systems, uh, but I love both of them. So getting into the DSLR, this is the D750 and a really, really great camera for concert photography. There are so many concert photographers that I know that actually have this same kind of like system with the Z6 II and the 750. So this is pretty standard. A lot of people have these cameras and use them. But the 750 is kind of like my, my baby. I've loved this since the day that I bought it. I've actually had this camera fixed twice now. Um, it was part of the 750 shutter recall, um, and then I dropped it and <laughs> broke it and had the thing pretty much replaced, or at least like the interior shutter replaced again. So this camera, is technically three cameras for me by now. Um, this is my third time on it uh, since I got it replaced twice. And I have gotten this, I wanna say about up to 160,000 shutter count. So this is, this is pushing it again. This is a very used, very loved camera. Um, and it still looks beautiful. I love this camera. It's fantastic. Uh, it's so sharp it works so well um i i just have no complaints about it which is probably why it's so hard for me to sell it and move to the z system because i love it so much but probably when this guy tanks i might have to just get rid of it and get another z6 too i do really love this camera this camera is so beautiful when you take photos with this there's a lot of times I don't feel like I ever need to edit them because they're just, the colors are great. It's so sharp. It's just like, it's, it's beautiful. I really love this. I love how easy it is to use this viewfinder. Um, I actually hated it in the beginning, the electronic viewfinder, but I am obsessed with it now. It's just so convenient and so easy to use. It's a beautiful camera, super lightweight. I have never had any issues with it and I baby it so much uh, because like I said, I dropped this guy, so I don't want to do that to this one. Um, but love this camera. It's a great camera. If I bought another camera these days, I would get another Z6 II. I would not personally yet upgrade to like a Z8 or a Z9. I just don't need it. This camera is absolutely perfect for me and is new. It has all of the qualities uh, and capabilities that I need it to have. So I love love both of these cameras. 
the last camera that I want to talk about is the one right in front of me, actually. I am filming all of my YouTube videos now on the ZFC. This is what I call like my travel camera. So this is the camera that is like in my purse. It's in my bag whenever I go somewhere. I have taken it out to Palm Springs numerous times. I've taken it to uh, Wisconsin. I have traveled with it numerous times just around my neck when I'm out exploring and I absolutely love it. It's a crop sensor and it looks like the old Nikon film cameras and it's just so fun and just such an incredible camera. I actually shot portraits with it and I was so impressed with this camera. The ZFC is pretty inexpensive because it is a crop sensor but I have just fallen in love with it and it looks so great for YouTube videos so I'm definitely going to keep it around and it is really nice to have a crop sensor in my gear to have that crop if I need it if I'm shooting something far away so I do really love it that is what you guys are seeing me on since I have those two different camera bodies I do have two different sets of lenses so I have the DSLR set and then I have the Z mount mirrorless set of lenses I have not fully switched over to one. I do not see that in my future, at least anytime soon. I love the lenses that I have and don't necessarily feel a need to get another one right away. So these are my all time favorite lenses. We're gonna start with the DSLR set and the lens that I probably invested the most money in. I was so scared to make this purchase, but this has been my favorite lens of all time, and I'm still obsessed with this. And this is the Nikon 70-200 2.8E FLED lens. This lens, um, I, <laughs> I knew that I needed this lens. This is kind of one of the main go-to concert photography lenses. And I started shooting more festivals where there were higher stages and I just couldn't get anywhere. I was shooting often with like an 85 prime and I knew that I needed this. And I took a plunge and like invested in this lens and was so scared about it. Um, but I have fallen in love with this thing. I think that's what makes it so hard to get rid of my DSLR gear. But this lens on the 750 is absolutely beautiful. It is kind of the mainstay in my camera case. I always have those two paired together and I just absolutely love it. I, ah, I just love this lens. It's really, really great lens and just so beautiful. It's so sharp. Nikon did a great job with it. The other DSLR lenses that I have that I haven't gotten rid of are all of my older primes. Um, I love all of these and just have no need to get rid of them because they come in handy and they're just so beautiful. I love the look of primes. They're just so sharp and they give to me like such a uniqueness to the photo that is a little different than a zoom. I do really love shooting with primes and the primes I have is I have a 50 1.4, I have the 85 1.8 and I have this 105 macro 2.8. This is a really beautiful lens. I don't shoot with it that often. I will often put this on my camera if I am doing let's say portraits or like wedding details. Um, this I think just looks really beautiful. I got this off of Craigslist for pretty cheap and I was like, hey, why not? We'll add it to my kit and see how I use it. And it is really, really fun to use. So I do love this. I just don't use it a lot for concert photography, especially since it's a 2.8. If I'm looking for something that I need a little bit more light in my photos, I will hop over to one of these two lenses. So I have the 1.8 or the 1.4 aperture. These are so small and so lightweight. I almost always have these in my camera bag because there's kind of no reason not to bring them. And that way, if there is a pretty low light, I'm prepared that I can kind of open up my camera a little bit more 
than shooting at a 2.8. So I almost always have these in my camera bag. I don't use them that often anymore, but I do absolutely love them. Next up, let's talk about mirrorless lenses. So when I got the Z6 II, I knew that I needed a lens specifically that I would be using that camera a lot with. I didn't want to use my DSLR gear and then use the converter. I did buy the converter just in case I had it because I had so many lenses at the time that I bought the Z6 II. I knew that I would need this. That being said, I wanted lenses that were native to that mount. So I was trying to figure out what lens I should invest in that I knew that I would use all of the time. And that was the 24 to 70. So much like the 70 to 200 never leaves my DSLR, the 24 to 70 pretty much never leaves my Z6. This lens, if I were to recommend any lens to any photographer, say you could only have one, you're on a desert island and you can only pick one lens to bring with you. This is the lens that I would get. This lens is perfect for concert photography, at least in my eyes, because I can get the wide portraits. I can get the full band. I can get the interactions. I can zoom in and get those close up details. I can, it's just so beautiful and so sharp. Nikon has done such a good job with their Z lenses and I am just so impressed with this one and it stays on my camera all the time. It's a beauty and I absolutely love it. So I'm super happy that this was my big investment when I got the Z camera. So this is pretty much like my big lens that I use all of the time. I did decide to get the 14 to 24 as well to round out my trilogy of lenses, if you will. That is what I am shooting this video on. So the 14 to 24 2.8 is what I do a lot of YouTube on. I thought that I was going to need this for concerts and it is too wide for me. It like distorts too much. I don't like the way that it necessarily looks and especially at 14, but I often use it at 24, which is kind of pointless because I have this one. Out of all of my lens purchases, the 14 to 24 is actually one that I regret. It's a beautiful lens. I love filming on it, but I feel like I invested a lot of money in something that I don't really use. So I have that lens. I don't talk about it often because I never put it in my camera bag. I do not bring it to gigs because I just don't need something that wide. I know a lot of people use it stylistically all for that, but for me, it just doesn't work that well. So I stick to the 24 to 70. That is the range that I like. And this is my baby that is on my Z cameras. And the last one to mention is I just have this cute 28 2.8 lens. This is just an adorable little kit lens that actually came with the ZFC. And I use this when I am traveling just to put it on that camera. And it's like a cute little so small that I don't really have to worry about bumping it around. It's really lightweight. So this is kind of like a travel snapshot lens for me. So this one's really cute. Um, I don't have any like pros or cons about it. It's just very useful when you're traveling and you just need something small. The next thing that I want to talk about is what I'm calling a specialty lens and specialty gear. So I did a video on this a while back and this is the Z lens. This is a 180 to 600. This is a 5.6 to 6.3 aperture. And this lens is so fun and so beautiful, but it is a very specific lens with a very specific use case for me. I started shooting a lot of stadium shows and I was really struggling at a 70 to 200. There were a few times that I rented this lens or this like focal distance. And I was told for a few shows that they wouldn't even give me a press pass if I didn't have something beyond a 200 millimeter focal width distance. This was almost out of necessity for me if I was going to start and keep shooting those shows. 
So I bought this baby, but this is only when I need it. This is never just in my camera bag because obviously it is too big to just throw into something. So this is very like specialized if I know that I am shooting at a stadium and I need to shoot with this. So this rarely comes out unless it's for those specific moments. So it is kind of a bummer that I have this big lens and for the most part it just sits underneath my bed, but it was a necessity for me and I'm so happy that I bought it. It is really beautiful and I use it all the time. But this lens also comes with its own kind of like specialty gear that I needed to get. So first of all, I had to get a new carrying case for it. Um, just because it's so big, I wasn't just going to set it out or keep it in the box all the time. So I had to buy this to help me carry it around when I am at shows. The other thing with that lens that I needed was a monopod. Um, this lens is very heavy. It is hard to balance. It is hard to stabilize me photographing this. Like my arms will start to shake. It's not the heaviest of lenses, but it is noticeable. So I knew that I needed to get a monopod to help me balance. I did add uh, this like ball head mount so I can like tilt it. So I'm not like moving the monopod that much. Um, but I did have to invest in a monopod and the top joint in order to properly use this lens. And then additionally, I have a footstool to help me just get a little bit higher above the crowd when I am shooting with this lens. So all of that being said, this stuff kind of goes together when I am using this lens. So if I'm shooting a stadium show, I will bring my regular gear with me, but this lens has to come, this monopod has to come, and this footstool has to come as well. So it does kind of add up to what you're bringing and carrying with you, but I am so happy that I have this lens. So happy that I have it added to my gear now. It is just, I just wish it was smaller, you know? Last thing that we're gonna talk about is accessories and just like necessities that I had to have and odds and ends. And the first being camera storage. So I've said that like, this stuff all stays underneath my bed when I am not using it. And I needed some like safe, storage boxes for my cameras because I just didn't want it sitting in my camera bag the whole time. I did a video a long time ago on these boxes that I got from Harbor Freight. I have two of them now and I absolutely love them. One of them has most of my Z gear in it and the other one has the DSLR gear in it. I love these because they're so sturdy. They're easy to organize. They have the foam inserts and I can just take this out from underneath my bag and toss it in my car if I'm in a rush or if I just want to bring everything and it's just so convenient. I do not need a roller wheel bag. I do not travel across the country with my bag because I don't tour. So I just really needed something that was safe, that felt like my camera gear was in a secure spot and just like easier organized storage. And that's why I bought these guys. Okay, so I've said that I didn't want to just leave everything in my camera bag. So I got to show you guys what my camera bag is. And this is the Ona tote, I guess. They don't sell this anymore from what I understand. But I love this bag. This is so heavy duty. I've been using this for at least eight years, I would say. And I mean, there is not a rip on this. And I load this thing up with all of my heavy gear and it just holds up so good and so great. It's really padded on the inside and has some great, like, you know, the normal separators and stuff for your gear. But the thing that I love about this camera bag is that it doesn't necessarily look like a camera bag. One of the reasons that I bought this is because I was walking around a lot of pretty bad places, I would say, in LA, and there's a lot of camera bags that scream camera bag. Like when you see them, it looks like you're carrying gear. It looks like you're carrying cameras. 
and I just really didn't want to label myself as a target, especially like if I'm walking alone at night in all of these places I've never been to, back and forth to my car at these venues. I just needed something that was like a little bit more let's say it will blend in. It wouldn't make me stand out. It wouldn't make me look like an easy target of, yeah, she's got thousands of dollars of camera gear on it, on her, like take it away from her. That was my worry when I started shooting a lot of shows here in Los Angeles. So I got this bag so it doesn't look like I'm carrying around camera gear and I absolutely love it. This bag does come with a crossbody strap. I don't really use it. I find it very uncomfortable to carry it as like a crossbody. It kind of flaps on you and it's just very heavy. So I, I carry this as a tote. This goes over my shoulder and I walk around into venues like this and I absolutely love it. It's a great bag and I highly recommend the brand because these are just incredibly sturdy. Okay, the next thing that's really important to me as an accessory that I needed was a camera strap. So I have two different types of camera harnesses. I have a single body, so this is a one side strap for only carrying one camera. And then I have a double body, so this is a full harness that can carry two cameras around on you. I absolutely love them. I cannot shoot with just a camera strap around my neck anymore. It hurt my neck so much and I definitely needed a harness to balance it out. I love this single body strap. This one is my favorite. This just sits on your shoulder and then straps around you. It's a beautiful leather. It's really nicely made. I got it off of Etsy and I'm just obsessed with it. I sadly don't use it that much just because I normally have both my 750 and my Z6 on me. So this normally stays at home, but sometimes I'll like go photograph some friends or just something for fun and I will bring this and just one camera. So I do absolutely love this harness, but it is so padded that this is fantastic. It doesn't hurt your shoulders and it's just, it's a great harness. It's so beautiful. Now the other one that I have is this double strap harness. This is a great harness for getting me through festivals. It is super sturdy. Um, I added my own little safety straps onto it to make sure that it is nice and secure, but it is a incredible harness. That being said, these double straps always hurt my shoulders. So I actually had a very cheap like backpack strap pads. So I <laughs> just sewed those onto these. I don't know if you can tell that much because obviously this is the leather that is the original harness. And then these are the straps that I have sewn in. It just really helps for the days that I'm at a festival for 10 hours, you know, to have this on your shoulders the whole time. It really hurts. Um, and I just, I, my shoulders are delicate. So I needed some extra padding there, but I do love this harness. It is really great. Um, and I definitely need it when I'm shooting with those two bodies. I swear I only have three more things to mention, so I'm gonna go through them very quickly. One being the loop earplugs. These are a necessity for me. I made this like little clip for them that I just clip onto my camera bag so I can carry them around with me all the time. I need to have earplugs, especially at all of these local shows. Local shows tend to be very loud for me and you absolutely should have earplugs. So definitely get these. Loops are great. They're not that expensive and the music still sounds really, really good with them. So that's why I have a few different pairs of loops. Next are these little uh, SD card cases. These have like saved me. I love organizing with these and just putting 
my cards in these and just picking it up and throwing it in my bag. It's just so easy. And the thing that I really love about them is I can write a little note on a piece of paper and just set it on top of the SD card and you can see through it to see what that note is. That really helps me on like wedding days, festival days that I can say like, day one, first half or something like that, and then put it in here and I know exactly what it is. I had cases before where you had the SD cards in like slots and it just didn't work for me. I'm a very visual person and needed to see like what I was using them for. Were they full? Were they not? And it was just so much easier to get these cases and make my own little labels for them. And then also I can see right away which SD cards I want. So I love these. They're easy to remember too, that I can just pick one up, throw it in my bag, and I got SD cards. Last but not least, I just started adding this to my bag. So I have it, and that is a like clear laminate holder. Um, I hate the like little stickies that you get from shows because they always fall off of me. I'm not sure why, but every time I get a laminate sticky that is like my photo pass for the show. If I put it on my jacket or if I put it on my shirt, I often put them on my pant leg actually, but they always peel off of me. So I have noticed other photographers have these like clear badge holders and you would just stick it in there and it's easy. It's around your neck. It's visible. It's more visible than having it like on your pant leg. And then if someone asks you like, where is your like pass, you can just, you know, show them. It's so much easier to keep this on you. I'm always afraid of losing my sticky as like I'm walking through a crowd. That doesn't happen if I just stick it in here. And then I will always have my business cards on me, which makes it also very convenient. So I now have this in my bag all the time that when I check in and I get my ticket, I get my sticky pass, I can just slide it in here and keep it. And then my sticky pass hasn't been used, so I can put it in a scrapbook. So it's kind of a win-win and I love this. So highly recommend this. I've been just doing this very, very recently, but this is very convenient and then I don't have to worry about losing any of those passes. <laughs> This was definitely another long video, but that was a walkthrough of pretty much all of my gear and why I use it and how I use it. So a little longer than I expected, but I hope it was insightful and at least interesting to watch through. If you have any questions or you think I'm missing something from my gear, I would love to hear it. Um, I always answer you guys in the comments below, so please feel free to ask or say anything in the comments and I'll meet you guys down there. I am also on Instagram at Boston Schultz and you can message me on Instagram. I answer all of my DMs. So I'm always eager to hear from you, see your work, um, and talk to you over there. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>